All right, what's up, Hawk Squad? Welcome back. So I have my last Hawk Banger recap reaction to Mr. Who's the Boss, and this one is called "I Bought Every Xbox Ever." So I didn't own every Xbox ever except the OG Xbox and the 360. Never owned Xbox One, and I've owned it the uh, Series S until upgraded to Series X. So yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a big Xbox fan. It absolutely is. So comment, let me know. Should I get the Xbox One X as my collection, or just forget about it overall? I might just forget about it because I have the Series X. <laughs> so Hot Squad, without further ado, we're going to end us off to see Mr. Who's the Boss Xbox recap console recap. Let's check it out. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. I have just bought every single Xbox console ever. I've got a TV from the time of each one's release and even the same game on all of it. So, let's see how the entire gaming experience has leveled up. When the original Xbox hit the stores all the way back in 2001, 2001, man, wow. I ain't played all much of my of the OG Xbox. I ain't played a lot of games with Xbox, so unfortunately. It hit hard. Gamers were shocked that anyone, let alone an American company like Microsoft, would dare to go toe to toe with the Japanese giants, yep. with Nintendo and Sony, who at this point had long established their dominance over the console gaming market. It just sounded like a recipe for disaster, <laughs> but there was a method to the madness. See, while Microsoft had no experience with consoles, they basically ran the world of PC gaming at the time, yep. thanks to Windows' extremely developer-friendly DirectX app programming interface. But they saw a threat on the horizon. With the announcement that Sony's PlayStation 2 was gonna be able to play DVDs and CDs, as well as games, Microsoft CEO Bill Gates realized that sooner or later, home consoles were going to overtake the PC as yep. the all-in-one media device. And so they had to act fast and release one of their own if they wanted to stay relevant. The solution? Xbox. And it mm. barely fits on my table. Inside you get the power cable, you get an old school TV adapter, the controller. Holy moly! Good this lord. Is chunkier That's than I remember. The Duke controller. There's some manuals, and then the console. This is huge! And what Microsoft mm. did here yeah. was really clever. They built the Xbox in a very similar way to how you would build a PC, with PC parts like an Ethernet port for online access and a built-in 8 gigabyte hard drive, mm. which was the first for any console. And this allowed them to also transfer over that Windows Direct X programming interface to this console, which is actually how we ended up with the name X. Box. And all of this gave the Xbox one huge advantage. It was incredibly easy to bring PC games to it. Oh, yeah, and it was also the most powerful console in the world. Yep. Microsoft were very aware that they needed to compete with the PlayStation 2 specs to make the Xbox a success, but what they decided to do instead was to completely annihilate them. We literally doubled the PS2 system memory. It's I'm just, I'm seeing my camera right now blur right now. It's going back and forth. It's getting annoying. Sorry, y'all. 64 megabytes of RAM, Xbox became the obvious choice for the most ambitious developers. Like Bungie, who created yeah, the most Bungie. important game in Microsoft's Halo. entire history. Halo. I gotta say, something about this really appeals to me. See I have the Master Chief Collection, by the way, on my Series X. I have yet to play it. I mean, man, I, I, I missed out on playing Halo, to be honest. I actually did miss out, so I'm definitely going to get a chance soon. This hyper-real indoor and outdoor environments. To some extent, they probably knew how much of an impact this game was going to have. Yep. Let's get this console on. I really, really miss consoles having moving parts like this. It's just hmm. so satisfying and yeah. tactile. Something about having an old console paired with an old TV, it completes the experience. You <laughs> can't forget this bad boy over here. I still can't believe this is a legitimate controller that Microsoft actually released. Yes. <laughs> like a of it definitely Jesus. makes you feel like you're about to do some serious damage. You've got player one, player two, player three, player four. This is what I miss about modern gaming. Like your friends would just come over to your house, they bring their controllers with them, they plug them into your machine, and you can just play on the couch together. Right, so oh, oh yes. Oh my God. Intro, man. Such a cool start of animation. Yes. Microsoft did such a good job of making this appeal to the gamer. Yeah. Oh my gosh. They absolutely smashed it with this soundtrack. I'm calling it now, this is going on my funeral. Yes. That's a bit dark, actually. Normal <laughs> difficulty. It's my first time in a while. You know what? Preposterous dimensions aside, this is actually quite comfortable and ergonomic. You can totally see how Halo became such a mainstay. It's a combination of the graphics, the gameplay, the soundtrack. Ah, this is way before any kind of motion smoothing tech. So it definitely feels just a little bit laggy compared to modern games. The rumble on the controller is fantastic. I remember how cool people found it when you could see the number of bullets left on the gun itself. It shows every single individual bullet that I have in my magazine. And it's all surprisingly legible. The reflections on the gun are really impressive. And then this would like blow people's minds. You press the white button on the top, and that becomes a flash. Oh yeah, and then you can also go up close and punch them. <laughs> and it's just as overpowered as it is today. Oh, I'm dead! Hmm. R.I.P. 
The original Xbox went on to sell 24 million units okay. in its lifetime, handily beating Nintendo's GameCube to cement Microsoft as mm. one of gaming's big three players, just after their first console. The crazy thing is though, that despite those sales, Microsoft actually made a loss of $4 billion on the Xbox, wow. just because it was that expensive to produce. But they yeah. weren't worried. The Xbox had served its purpose of building the foundations of what would become a complete game changer. Yes, the Xbox you say see. Now, My favorite Xbox console to this day, to this day. You might be wondering why they didn't just do the normal thing and call it the Xbox 2. Well, this is around the time when Sony was launching their PlayStation 3. And so instead of making it seem like they were still on 2 Xbox and two. lagging a generation what? behind, Microsoft decided to just scrap the numbering system and focus on how this Xbox put the user at the center. Get it? Like, 360? Hmm. And the process of actually trying Quite to get a brand new sealed one of these is actually insane. I mean, you can see the entire box is falling apart because it's oh. so old and also probably not stored very well. So, the console's on top this time, there's a few manuals, and then two compartments, after which you get absolutely assaulted by accessories. I had no idea there was an Xbox TV remote. I think it did on that TV remote, I think it did. And also, RP to the Xbox 360 store, it shut down back the end of, J of July, unfortunately. The wall adapter, ethernet cable for internet, a headset included in the box, nice. The mm. TV display cable, the frankly enormous power oh, supply, yeah. oh, and oh, God. the <laughs> Wow, this is Good noticeably Lord. trimmed down versus its predecessor. Yeah. It's definitely lost a little bit of that core gamer personality that the first Xbox had, but you can see why they've done it. Everything about this is way more streamlined, from the sleeker shape of both the console and the controller, to the fact that the massive X branding has basically disappeared, all serving the goal of making it a more appealing home media device mm. that even non-gamers would want, which I guess also explains this funny media control remote. The 360 dwarfed its predecessor in the specs department, at roughly eight times the raw processing mm. power, with 512 megabytes of RAM, helping it to display far more graphically intensive games, yes. notably at 720p resolution. Mm. Being a PC company first, Microsoft was far more experienced than Sony and Nintendo in internet devices. And so, they used this advantage to make sure that this Xbox had the fastest internet hardware, and that Microsoft's online servers were the most reliable. And while the original Xbox did also have some online capabilities, with the 360 they built online into the core DNA of it. Yeah. You could buy music, you could stream TV, you could download movies. This was really the beginning of true online competitive yes. gaming. I gotta give huge credit for 360 because they introduced me to GTA 4 literally before the, I played on PS3. I played GTA 4 on the 360, I absolutely loved it. I had so much third party games on the 360, it's crazy. Plus, rather than making each game its own separate online experience, Microsoft realized that if they could instead create a single profile system that could reach across all games, with achievements and gamer score that a player could accumulate to show their friends how good of a gamer they are, they would garner far more loyalty to the console. This yeah. is why the 360 shipped with a headset right out the box. Microsoft wanted to make it as easy as possible for people to jump online and get fully invested in the Xbox ecosystem. Hmm. Oh yeah, and it also had Halo 3, hmm. which is still considered one of the greatest video games of all time. Okay. Well, wow. it's actually kind of weird to be holding a normal sized controller in my hand. This is so comfortable in comparison. And then this was like the party trick of the generation. Hold that Xbox button and oh, yeah. wirelessly turn that on. It's so cool seeing that green disc slowly pulse to life. It is not a quiet machine though. I've owned yeah, several yeah, room not... fans that make less noise than that. Ooh, wow. That is iconic. Yes, that was the early days of the 360 before they had that next one. And they're just flexing the 3D power of this console. So this middle button is like your portal to the online features. There's so many things to do here. This is such a great user interface for a console. It's colorful, it's fast, it's clear. And I guess most importantly, it keeps you connected to your friends. Kind of also, by the way, that 360 right there was my first 360 I've had before I had um, the next one, the um, the one without the, the with the sensor, I believe, the sensor with the button. This was my first one because my brother gave it to me. It feels a bit like a PC that you connect to your TV. You can actually got the Windows logo here. And I really wish the online servers were still up. All yeah. these kids spending their entire evenings screaming obscenities at people's moms. Just good times. Okay, so straight away you can notice the higher resolution of this. It's also got a little bit of that motion blur, so panning around feels more fluid. There's also so much unexpected freedom from just being wireless. Even the character's walking animation is much more human. I still miss the fact that you can't scope in by holding the left trigger, like you can on most modern first-person shooters. Yeah. and Grunts is one of my favorite Pastimes. The higher power of this console has allowed the scale of the battles to increase. There's more enemies involved in every encounter, and vastness of the battlefields has gone up. Probably the easiest way to see the higher resolution is just looking at the user interface. Oh, I got an achievement! It makes such a difference to the mm. gaming experience. Wow, you can dual wield weapons in this. That's such a cool way of stepping things up from last gen Halo. 
The Xbox 360 wasn't without its struggles. Like, thousands of consoles were plagued with hardware errors at launch. Yes, Red Ring of Death. infamous Red Ring of Death, where the oh, lights surrounding the power button would turn red to oh. indicate that your console was effectively a... Well... Yeah. X. Yeah. <laughs> And then there was the 360 Slim, the that slim. you could get bundled with Xbox. That's what was the Slim. The Slim. I had the Slim. Xbox Connect. Microsoft's motion camera answer to Nintendo's wildly successful Wii, which Microsoft hyped up enormously, only to forget to release any good games on it. To be fair, I remember being blown away when I first played Kinect Adventures, but let's be honest, it's no Halo. The 360 Slim yeah. is quieter and drew less power than the base version, which was enough to make it quite a popular machine. So, Microsoft decided to make lots of versions. The Arcades, the Pro, the Elite, the 360E. Yeah. Yes. And overall, it's fair to say they did enough things right to almost quadruple the last console sales yeah. to 84 million. And a sub to the channel would be... exciting. Hmm. That's too easy. Hmm. But then they would have what would become the biggest fail in gaming history. Yeah, that's an understanding right there. I think the 360 is still the best selling Xbox console for this day. And I never owned the Kinect, but yeah, the Xbox One, we what a, what a terrible launch. What a terrible launch. On the surface though, it might not be obvious why. See, what made the 360 such a hit was its combination of gaming, online play, and its dual purpose as a media box. So with the next generation Xbox One, they decided to run with those portraits. They showcased the Xbox One as being this smart media box of the future, being able to seamlessly juggle both television and gaming and actually being always online, which might have been okay, but it's just the way they went about it went down like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Because it wasn't just that the Xbox One could be always online, it had to be to function. Yes. It had a system that would assign any game you buy specifically to your account, so you couldn't buy or sell Man. used games. They spent so much time talking about TV that it didn't even feel like the launch of a next-gen games console. They yeah. called it the Xbox One, even though it was the third Xbox. Yeah, the, their wording was, the, the freaking title of these Xboxes were so confusing. Having of all was that instead of forgetting about Kinect after its failure last gen, Microsoft instead decided to bundle their next Kinect 2.0 with every single Xbox One, mm. pushing the price up to a whole hundred dollars more than Sony's PlayStation 4. All you need to do is to see the difference in audience reaction to know how this generation was about to At go. $399. Yeah. 429 pounds in the UK. You could say that gamers were <laughs> inconsolable, but the sad part of it is that there's quite a lot to like here. The box is split nicely into two key compartments. One half has a new, way nicer, sleeker headset, huge power supply again, an HDMI cable, mains plug, and then a completely redesigned controller. Mm. The second compartment is, well, the console, which is designed yeah. to be mostly just a black box so that it would fit well in people's living rooms. Also, Xbox One was not messing around in the power department. While the Xbox 360 was around 8 times more powerful than the original Xbox, this monster was around 16 times better than the 360, mm. or 125 times the original. It's basically a full-on PC, with 8 gigabytes of RAM supporting its now native 1080p output. Even the game boxes have had a bit of a facelift. The Xbox One game packaging looks so much more modern to me. Mm. Right. And new controller time as well. I'm a huge, huge fan of the Xbox One controller. This is such an overhaul. It's this really careful blend of both matte and glossy parts. It just looks very pro. Boot the thing up. Notice how the Xbox logo is now white instead of green. They're really trying to tone down the we are just for gamers messaging. The home screen is vastly different to what shipped on the Xbox 360. That's actually in part because Microsoft played around with a lot of different user interfaces on the 360 before yeah. eventually settling with this tile-like design for the Xbox One, which does feel semi-inspired by Windows 10. I always wanted to feel a little bit more like a console and a little bit less like a computer. I do you feel like the load times of everything have gotten longer <coughs> from the last year? Got a way more sophisticated menu to create your avatar with. You can even see the shine on the face. It's pretty impressive. This is definitely the era of the connected game. The difference is crazy. I mean, straight away, it's running at 60 frames per second for the first time. There is absolutely no way that the Xbox 360 could render that many things at one time. Mm. And they've also finally added in those modern day staples like clicking down the analog stick to sprint or being able to scope in using the left trigger. One of the other things that Microsoft has improved this time around is the latency of the controller. The first time they went wireless with the 360, there was just a little bit of delay, but that's gone now. The scale of the game means that you no longer feel like you're part of a battle. You feel like you're in a war. Hmm. Can't wipe the grin off my face.
Unfortunately, while it was a big step up, it still wasn't quite as powerful as the competing PlayStation 4. While yeah. Sony built the PS4 from the ground up with the sole purpose of gaming, Microsoft said themselves that they purposefully did not target the highest end graphics with the Xbox One in favor of a broader focus on entertainment. Mm. And so just being that tiny bit behind the PlayStation in terms of performance landed Xbox with the reputation of being the console for noobs who weren't really serious about gaming. Mm. Anyway, obviously after all of this, Microsoft realized they'd shot themselves in the foot with the whole multimedia thing. Yeah, so they did. They set out on a mission to turn things around, releasing Xbox Ones that you could buy without the Kinect, scrapping initially planned features like the always online restrictions and allowing the use of pre-owned games, and most importantly, creating two new revisions of the console, yep. the Xbox One S, and the Xbox One X. Yep. And this was one of the best decisions Microsoft ever made. So, By the way, like I said before, I never owned an Xbox One, not even, not, not even the model. Not even each mod, but I've been, I've been having eyes on to get an Xbox One X, so I had eyes on it. Starting with the One X, it comes in a smaller, neater box with three compartments. We've got one which has the HDMI cable, a slightly updated controller, and the mains adapter. One which has the game code for Forza Horizon 4 and some manuals, which seems like a great use of space. And one which is the console. So, why was this such a great idea? Well, it's because Microsoft were kind of right with the original Xbox One, in assuming that there were a lot of people who wanted a high-end gaming device, and also a lot of people who wanted a fast, smooth, connected TV box. The mistake the mistake they made though was to assume that those were the same groups of people. They were in fact largely two separate groups that this new strategy of two separate consoles allowed them to target specifically. Mm. So this One S is the TV box. It's designed to just slot into your cabinet and forget about it. It's slimmer than the original console, it runs quieter, it has HDR and 4K Blu-ray support mm. and the new controller has baked in Bluetooth which gives it longer range. And you might have also noticed that there was no power supply in the box and that's because the One S is a feat. They've managed to make this console smaller while also cramming the entire power supply inside the body while also making this way cheaper than the launch Xbox One at just $299. And then we've got the One, One X, X which is okay. kind of Microsoft's way of overcompensating. It's them saying to gamers, hold up, you said you wanted power, right? Well, here's the most powerful console to ever exist. Hmm. You get a 14-day free trial for Xbox Live Gold. How generous. An HDMI cable, the same controller as the S, a power cable, and then the One X itself. Hmm. No frills, definitely no connect. This console is just pure numbers. Hmm. It has a faster... Looks very sleek too, very sleek. CPU, faster GPU, 50% more RAM, double the storage at one terabyte, and of course, full 4K HDR support for its games. This thing is 4.5 times faster than the Xbox One, wow. which means that compared to the original Xbox, we're talking approximately 563 times more powerful. Okay. Did I just saw the uh, freaking PS2 <laughs> to, um, logo and said the Xbox with the world? I am ready to experience the power. It's actually an even more streamlined controller. There's a whole new boot up screen as well, which is basically Xbox saying, we got power. I remember the marketing around this console was basically just the word 4K slapped everywhere. Mm. And this controller, they've actually added this like micro dot texture on the back. So while the Xbox One X was not a completely new platform from the Xbox One, it still has the same library of games. There were quite a few developers who took it as an opportunity to make the definitive enhanced version of their existing game. Like with Halo 5, this is taking so long to load. <laughs> Come on Microsoft! One thing Microsoft have done a really good job with though is keeping the console quiet. Like all I can hear right now is still the Xbox 360 over there. So this is running at 4K 60 frames per second now. And even though it's the exact same game with the exact same effects as that, the resolution bump shows you a level of detail that you couldn't see before. So it still kind of feels next generation. Plus the developers also use the extra power of the One X to increase the draw distances. So you can just see even further. Isn't it kind of crazy though that this console, after just a few years of the Xbox One's release, is so much more powerful and yet so much smaller. Mm. So yeah, while the One was definitely not the One, the One yeah. S and the One X were enough for Microsoft to claw their total Xbox One sales all the way up to a respectable 58 million units. Okay. And since then, it's pretty clear they've held on tight to the lessons they learned. Because in 2020, when it came to the next generation, right from the get-go, they launched two consoles That's with nice. the exact same strategy. The Series S, a media-focused machine at $299, and the Series X, yep. a gaming-focused machine at $499. But this time, because these two consoles were built from the ground up for these different kinds of users, they're even more specialized. So yep. for the Series S, the box is pretty standard Microsoft Fair. 
By the way, I did unboxing this and I gotta give major credit to the Series S for being the first ever in this console generation as my first console before I, I upgraded to the Series X and got a PS5. Well, once you get it open, my gosh, this thing's tiny. Yep, it's wrapped like a piece of sushi. There's a power cable, HDMI, a next generation controller, and then the console. So yeah, this is the smallest Xbox ever. Yes. It's like a lunchbox. Making it the easiest console ever to just slip into your cabinet and never see it again. Hmm. Did you come because I said lunch? Hmm. They did cut the disk drive in the process, partly for size reasons, partly for cost reasons, and probably also partly to try and push people to try Microsoft's monthly subscription yep. Game Pass service, which gives you access Game to Pass. a Netflix-like rotating library, but for games. And then in terms of power, it's a bit of a weird one, because the Series S is a new console with completely modern internals and next gen features, but it's also a much cheaper machine than the One X that just launched three years prior. And so on paper, it actually ends up a bit weaker in terms of like the raw grunt available. Yeah. But there is a significant benefit just to being new. Like because both the Series S and the X are fitted with solid state drives, instead of traditional old school spinning hard drives, they can load up games like this. Yes, this is even more faster. than the last controller. Even the triggers are ribbed and the entire controller except the face buttons this time are mapped, which I guess is like function over form. There's a new hero game on the block. This is Halo Infinite. And you might be thinking, well, this is a weaker console, right? How is it going to in any way play a game better than the One X? But this is what I was saying, it's a really weird balance. So technically this console runs the game at a lower resolution, 1080p versus 4K, but it's doing so with next generation effects. Oh, and also it yep. can run games at up to 120 frames per second. So for example, if you look at the gun I'm holding, you can see it's got a whole other layer of visual detail. And it also supports these next generation effects, like ray tracing. The firing animations are insane. <laughs> look at all this. You you can also feel the controller rumble, but it's noticeably subtler than it was on like the first Xbox. And this is actually the first time that you can actually see that the needles in the gun are crystals. And I guess the other thing that modern games have gotten better at is finding interesting ways for you to travel. So in this case, you get a grappling hook that just lets you attach yourself to anything. Kind of cool. It's impossible to argue that the Series S doesn't get some really impressive output for the cost. It's just not close to the level of its bigger brother. The Series X. Yep. And the premium tier of this console becomes immediately apparent the second you open the box. This is a different experience altogether. Matte black, loads of attention to detail. They've done a really good job of making this feel like a, a proper Christmas present. There's also a power cable, HDMI, the Series X controller, and the Series X. Mm. Definitely one of the more unique shaped ones I've held. What a big boy. This really is the generation of strange spacing Bigger console boy, designs. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, compared to the PlayStation 5, which Sony wanted to look like nothing else in your living room, yeah, seriously. the Xbox Series X's boxy fridge-like design makes it look more like a PC, which is kind of mm -hmm. nice because that's what Microsoft has always done best. The Series yeah. X takes the S and overclocks the CPU from 3.6 gigahertz to 3.8, dials up the 10 gigabytes of RAM to 16, and quadruples the amount of graphics power. So. Let's see what 1,125 times the performance of the original Xbox looks like. It's time for the Series X. The difference that high dynamic range makes is very much day and night. It feels like when it comes to loading times, they started fast, they got slow, and now they're fast again. This is incredible. I mean, yeah, this is the same game as the Series X, but playing here, it actually feels bigger than the jump between the One and the One X. It's mm. partly because we have a larger, better screen here, but right. you do also need a console that can take advantage of that. The combination of sound design with haptics makes every movement feel so precise. And here's the one thing that hasn't changed. Jeez, freaking grunts. I guess the one thing you could say Xbox has played it quite safe with is the controller. Compared to Sony, who's built those pressure sensitive triggers, I guess Microsoft's focusing more on backwards compatibility and keeping all the core things in place. Mm. All right, W Video, Mr. Was Boss, W Video. Absolutely, man, because hey, look, I love Xbox, what they do, you know, with the 360 especially, and I own the Series X, whatnot, and yeah, overall, W Video, Mr. Was Boss, W Video. So. Hopefully I will get a chance to play every single Xbox schools I missed out on. I currently own Sunset Overdrive, Quantum Break, and the Halos, the Halo Mess Collection, and Halo Infinite as well. So that's really the only, only schools I've gotten so far. But I have yet to play Gears of War, by the way. I have yet to play Gears of War. There's just so much, so much games I have to get through. I have to get through, man. It's nuts. But overall, W recap, Mr. Who's the Boss, W video. So, Hot Squad, I'm going to call it quick for today, and that is my conclusion of my Hot Baker recap reaction to Mr. Who's the Boss Xbox recap. So, if you enjoyed this, please hit the button, share your thoughts. 
Do you own every single Xbox game? What is your favorite Xbox exclusives? And which ones do you think I should recommend playing? So, Hawk Squad, this is your man Taurus Hawk signing out for today. I have more Hawk Bangers that I meant to do last week, well, the last month overall, to continue. So, I will upload those tomorrow. So, Hawk Squad, like I said before, this is your man Taurus Hawk signing out for today. I will see y'all later for more Hawk Bangers. Safe out the sky. Peace out and have a great day.